Stress-Free Cooking is brought to you by From the sunny Mediterranean comes one of the world's finest olive oils for all your cooking needs. Pompeian Extra Virgin Olive Oil, Classic Mediterranean, and Extra Light Tasting. Pompeian makes everything better. From our table to yours, Opeachy Wines. Fine wines and spirits from around the world since 1913. Cutco, the world's finest cutlery. Melissa's, the freshest ideas in produce. And Sub Zero Wolf Appliances. Celic Brown. Welcome to Stress-Free Cooking. Today I have a great guest on with me, my friend Kathleen Donovan. She's quite an expert on knives, and I think that knives are one of the most important things in your kitchen. So Kathleen and I are going to talk to you a lot about how to select knives, how to care for your knives, and of course, knife skills. Welcome Kathleen. Thank you, Barb, for having Thank me here. Thank you for coming. Happy to be here. So before we get started, we always open stress-free cooking with a glass of wine because we want our guests to put on their bunny slippers, pour a glass of wine, and cook with us. So how about if we try this Umbrian wine that I found? Sounds delicious. It's a blend of Grachetto and Chardonnay, so it's gonna be light and fruity, and also it has a little bit of oak to it, so I think it's gonna be really nice with all the vegetables that we're going to be uh, prepping and cutting and turning into our soup. Oh, great. So cheers, thanks for cheers. coming. Thank Enjoy. you. Mm. Oh, I love, there's a little acid, a lot of acid in here too, yeah, which I think is nice. going to be really great. Okay, well let's get started. So, I am a new, I'm new to keeping house, and okay. I want to know where I start buying my knives. Well, I think first, the, ideally it'd be nice if you could actually, when you go shopping for knives, pick up the knife and be able to hold it in your hand. Mm -hmm. That's um, a great idea, the weight, Yes, yeah, so you can tell size. by the weight, the size. And, if you can cut something with it, it'd be it's, nice to be able to cut with And it. often they do have displays with a carrot or something. Right, right. So you can at least get the feel for the knife. Okay. Um, I would look for high carbon stainless steel knives. Um, high carbon allows the knife to hold a sharp edge. And the stainless steel allows the knife to stay looking nice, um, you know, and resist stains, resist corrosion. And I think the key to stainless steel is what I learned from a friend of ours who said stainless steel doesn't mean it's not going to stain, it means it's going to stain less. Correct. Or it's stain resistant. Exactly. Which I thought was a great tip because I think everybody thinks there, anything stainless is never gonna have to be cleaned or anything. Sure, right. Uh, another thing to look for, Barb, is you know a full tang where the steel actually goes, you can see it goes all the way, way down the, the handle. handle. And that gives you better balance and more strength in your knife. Right. Um, so that's a, uh, something to look for. Rivets uh, are a, a pretty good sign that you have a full tang if you have three rivets. Um, make sure they're flush ground to the handle to, so that you're not getting any uh, bacteria in the handle. Right, or, um, or you know, grabbing, your hand is getting right, caught on that. Right. right, you know something else a lot of people forget to look for is a good guarantee, a good solid guarantee, because you're making an investment. You want to invest in quality knives. Um, because you're going to you're going to use them every day. Right. So we hope. Well, yeah, we <laughs> hope exactly. Um, so you want to want to make sure you have a good guarantee that's going to hold up um, over time, uh, okay. where you can you know you'll have the knives so forever. I always like to tell people when they're um, learning how to use a knife, you want to hold on to the knife close to the blade. Yes. We don't hold on back here because this is very insecure and very right. wobbly. Right. But if I hold on closer to the blade, I have so much more control. Sure. I wouldn't want to be back here trying to do this. I'd be all over the place. So exactly. you want to hold on close to the blade. And also, 
a, sa a, a safer knife is actually the sharper knife. Absolutely. And, and the reason being, obviously, is it, it, it's more effortless to cut through the food. Right. And you can make more uniform pieces, uh, which will cook more evenly. So that's, uh, that's a helpful thing. Great. Have. I think we should start with a little bit of a knife skill. Okay. All right. Sure. So I have an onion. It's round. Yes. As we all know. Of course, there are chipolinas, which are flat. But this is a nice, big, round onion. Whenever I'm cutting something round, I like to make it flat so it doesn't roll away from me. So I'm going to take my chef's knife and cut it in half, especially a big onion like this. Sure. Keep the, st the root end on. It'll hold the onion together while we're cutting. Cut the stem off. Now we can peel the onion. Whoops, I'm going to cut a little further. That onion is not perfect. Okay, so let's peel the onion. Then what we're going to do is make some cuts. So we'll take the chef's knife, make some horizontal cuts. Put your hand right on top. Make some vertical cuts with the point of the knife. Cut straight down. And then what I'm gonna do is take my free hand, make a claw, place it on top of the onion, and just slice right across the top. And then when I get to the end, I usually just have to cut around the, the uh, root a little bit. So everything should be fairly uniform. And if it's not, I just take my knife and I just cut again wherever I need to to get those nice uniforms, uh, yeah, that's good. that nice uniform dice. So we're going to make a soup today because we want to do a lot of demo of proper knife skills. Right. So this will be the start of our soup. I'm going to put some extra virgin olive oil in a soup pan, enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Pop the onion in there. Okay. And we'll have to clean this knife. Yes. So could you give me a little instruction on cleaning my knives? Well, uh, a lot of knives will be dishwasher safe, which is true, but You've made the investment in a quality knife, so you'll want to take care of it. And so I would mm -hmm. recommend hand washing the knife. And be very careful. Don't throw the knife into soapy water uh, without knowing where it's at. Um, I always save my knives to clean last. At the end. So that I know where they are at all times till I'm ready to wash them. If you want to put them in the dishwasher, if they're dishwasher safe, that's okay. But be careful. Uh, make sure the points are pointing down. You might, the reason I also don't like dishwashers, things get jostled around in a dishwasher. Yes. You might ruin your blade, it might be, you know, so you want to be careful with that. You might also damage your dishwasher uh, because That's if the knife comes loose. That's a good point, if it's loose. jostling around and they're usually lined with plastic or rubber exactly. and it would cut. Right, right. Plus, so, when you reach your hand in there, you don't want to ha run the risk of not paying attention and exactly. you could get cut. Or if, or if you loaded the dishwasher and somebody's unloading the dishwasher. That's a good point. You know, they don't know where those knives are, so that's if important. If you're lucky enough to have somebody in your house who wants to unload your yes. dishwasher, right. you don't want them to get cut. Exactly. You can also lay, lay the knife down uh, flat in the dishwasher, right. but again, it's going to move around in there and it, it you know, I, I, hand washing really is the way yeah. to do I, it. I never put my knives in the dishwasher. Yeah. Now, since we're just going to move on to garlic, I'm just going to wipe this off okay. carefully. Okay, so let's go on to garlic. Okay, my favorite. Your favorite. <laughs> it's garlic season, actually. All the garlic festivals are going on. Yeah. So, all right, let's take a couple of cloves of garlic. We're going to make our own version of minestrone today. Great. So vegetables, bean, and pasta soup. Okay, so we need garlic. Lots of garlic. <laughs> Place the <laughs> knife on the garlic. Give it a whack. We'll do two cloves. The skin will come right off. And sometimes garlic's a little sticky, but don't worry about it. The other thing I'd like to talk about maybe while I'm doing this garlic is cutting boards. Yes. And, or cutting surfaces, not necessarily cutting boards. Right. So I know there's a lot of information that you have on wh what we should cut on. Sure. Um, people think that cutting food dulls your knife, and that's not what dulls your knife. What dulls your knife is what you're cutting on. So don't cut on ceramic, don't cut on glass, metal, don't cut on your countertop. You need to have a good, either a, uh, a plastic or a wood cutting board or something that's um, uh, is not as... Uh, it'll give a little bit. It'll give a little bit, exactly. Right. Uh, so make sure you do that. And uh, you also, you want to bring, if you have straight edge knives, you're going to have to sharpen them once in a while. Uh, you're going to have to bring, you have to freshen the edge once in a while to keep them maintained well. So as soon as you start feeling them become a little dull, 
run them through a, uh, your manufacturer's sharpener uh, or a sharpening steel or sharpening stone uh, to bring the edge back a little bit because they will um, over time get a little a little dull. Right, and how, how do you sharpen your knives or how often do you recommend sharpening your knives? Although I know that's subject to how often you use them. Sure, I would say if you use them on a regular basis, I would every, every couple of times you use your straight edge knife, maybe run it through the sharpener. Okay. Um, and you can maybe feel there's a little drag on the knife and maybe that's about the time you want to freshen the edge again. Well, that was really great information on sharpening and really, really an important part of keeping your knives good, uh, taking good care of your knives right. because they are such an investment. So we're going to add some green bell pepper and some yellow bell pepper to our soup. Okay. So let's t take the pepper, and I like to cut off all four sides like so. Makes it a lot easier to get the seeds out. Set that aside, okay? And then I just take my knife and I cut it into strips like so. And then if I don't want strips and I want a chop or a dice, I just cut across, like stack them up and just cut across. And that's a rocking motion. I don't know if people are, yes, are noticing Yes, the rocking that, motion, the train locomotion. Yes. You know, it yeah. looks like a train wheel. You push forward, lift up, pull back. Push forward, lift up, pull back. And you're not <laughs> doing this. Right, and that'll damage your knives if you, if you continue that's to do that. That's right. It, so. And then just stack them up. So let's do all of the green pepper. Rocking motion, forward and back, lift and pull back. It takes a little practice too, don't oh, you sure. think? Oh, sure. And you I know? think people have to understand you're not gonna be a celebrity chef uh, overnight and do you need to be one? Probably not. I don't so, think so. You know, just take your time and practice. Right. And it feels good if you really do get the hang of it. So stack up those little strips of pepper Push forward, lift up, pull back. Push forward, lift up, pull back. The other thing that's really important for people to keep in mind also is that the hand that doesn't hold the knife has to be in the shape of a claw or a C. Right. Because you want to keep your fingertips down. You don't want to run the risk of hurting the end of your finger. Sure. And if you did this type of thing on your knuckles, it's not quite as bad as if you hurt the end of your finger. Right. So this goes into the soup pot. And we're going to do, very quickly, do the yellow pepper. Okay. So we'll grab the yellow. You know, cooking with color is always such a fun thing oh, to absolutely. do. It's nice to mix up the colors of food. Once in a while, some of the colors are a little more expensive. But, right. you know, in the long run, I think it's always kind of worth it, don't you? Yes, and they say that you, you, you really eat with all of your senses. Yes. Sight is part of that, so. Sight, and also it's just healthier to eat in sure. many different colors. Oops. And push the food into the knife. As the knife comes back, the food goes right into it, and it makes it a lot easier to be a little bit more efficient because if you're really trying to get dinner on the table in a hurry, right. you want to be efficient. Now, you don't have to be a speedy Gonzales with the knife, but right. efficiency is a little different, I think, than speed. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And when you have a quality knife, it'll all be much easier to do it. Yes, exactly. and a sharp knife. Yes. And I think a sharp knife is really a better friend to you than a dull knife because if you're using a dull knife, you can actually slip a little more with the knife. Sure. Now peppers are easy to cut, so that's really a good thing to practice on because it, it's not that it's like a carrot or an onion, which you right. know is, bites you a little bit. Sure. So this would be a good practice session. So maybe someone could make like a nice tricolor pepper pasta sauce. All right. All right, so let's give this a little stir. Well, you know, I think a nice addition to our soup would be a zucchini. Absolutely. So I happen to have a nice fresh zucchini from the farmer's market. Now, if I had a baby zucchini, I might just slice it. Right. But since I have this zucchini, I think we should quarter it okay. and slice it. So would you like to, to do that sure. for us? Sure, sure. All right, great. And you're going to use the chef's knife? I will use the chef's knife. And this is great. You're another lefty. I know. But, you know, we plan it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put what we don't need into that bowl. Great. Going to the flat surface, Barb. Yep, going to the flat surface. Good. Keeping your fingers out of the way. That's yes. a good thing. <laughs> and I should move out of the way so you have more room to work. One of the most important things is to keep your cutting board clear and have lots of room. Right, right. 
So now we're just cutting this this way, Barb? Yep, just okay. cut it into about a you know, quarter to half inch slice.